Hey everybody, this is Strategy Wizard, and this is my son Nathan. Hello. Now today we're going to be reviewing Labyrinth by Ravensburger. This is a game that's really, uh, it's really a kid's game, but I think it's one that I think everyone can appreciate, at least on some level. Now, give us some more details, Nathan. It's seven, the age is seventy ninety nine, and two to four players. Okay, there, thank you very much, Nathan. So, 7 to 99. Apparently, once you get to 100, you have Alzheimer's, and therefore you can't play this game anymore, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. But either way, I think that this game is going to be... Um, it's, it's one that I think they're right about 7. Even though Nathan plays it, It does. we have to help him with this one for sure. because, And you'll see why in a second. But either way, I don't agree with the... 99. I think 100. I think you can still play. But let's go ahead and go to the table and we'll show you how to play. Okay, so this is what Labyrinth looks like when it's set up for two players. You'll notice there's four miniature wizards. Blue, yellow, green, and red. And the corners have nice bright circles of each color so you know based on the color wizard you choose where do you start. You always start in one of the corners. So the goal of the game is to collect all of your treasures. Each person is, each player is going to get a deck of these. You basically deal out all of them. So if you have, if you're doing a two-player game, you get more than if you're playing a three or four-player game. And the way you do this on your turn, you're going to flip. You're going to flip it over, the top one. This is the treasure I have to go for first. So let's say I go first. Well, technically. Youngest player goes first, so we'll go ahead and uh, play by the rules. Nathan, you go ahead and look at your top card. Go ahead and show the camera. I'm trying to go for that genie. So, I'm trying to go for that genie. So what happens on your turn, you have to move the maze. So we have one extra tile that's not on this board. Now this board, whenever you pull it out of the box, there's a lot of empty slots. So the yellow arrows, everything in the yellow columns and rows, uh, those are movable, 100% movable. The, where there's not a yellow arrow, every other tile is already stuck in the board. They start that way no matter what. So the candlestick is always here, the knight's helmet is always here, the g green gem is always here, etc. So you can only move certain parts of the board, so or the maze. So Nathan, go ahead and start. You have even though the genie is right here, he can win or he can get that first treasure right now but he still has to move the maze so Nathan go ahead and move the maze somehow some way with this tile I'll move it here okay so you just push it in slide everything out one comes out that'll be for my turn now Nathan moves and you can move as far as you want as long as there's nothing blocking you so he can move all the way to the genie and he can reveal, hey, I got the genie. I got the genie. So he puts that face up in front of him. On his Now, for his next turn, he'll look and see what his next treasure is, which is going to be that literally treasure. Yeah. So now on my turn, I look and I go, okay, I've got this little hobbit fellow with a tail. I'm not sure exactly what he is. He's right here. He's so close, but I'm blocked off from getting to him. So I have to find a way to fix that problem. How would I do that? Um, I'm going to push this here, which is going to let me move here. Uh, good idea. And then, Nathan, now it's your turn. So now he gets this tile. Let's see, which one? Okay. I have treasure to get, but it's on my way to try and find treasure. So, so where is the treasure? Way over here. What's... I could get to it almost. You're very close. Um, so, let's see. It's kind of hard. What I might do is try doing, what would this do? This would make it to where, what would this do? This would make it to where I can move all the way here. Okay, so you can go ahead and do that. That'll put you really close to it at least. Yeah. I'll go right here. Okay, so now it's my turn. At this point, I find I have a great move, so I'm going to go ahead and do this, and I can move right here, claim my first treasure. 
and then I'll look at my next one to see what it is. The helmet, which I'm very close to already, so that'll be very easy to do. Now, here's the thing. R the key rules that you need to understand, you, if someone just moved, let's, since I just did this, Nathan, not that he would want to do this because it would help me, but he can't go back and just move it right back where it was. So you can't keep somebody going back and forth to mess them up. And also, if, let's say, I was right here, if Nathan chose, or if I chose, to move this tile, which makes me go off the board, I would then teleport over to the other side of the maze. So basically, you can't you can't be knocked off to be killed or anything like that. No one gets hurt. No one's you're not trying to kill anybody. You're just going through the maze, trying to find the treasures. Once you have all of your treasures and up face up in front of you, because you've landed on all of them in the proper order then you have to move back to your color. If the first person to do that, you get all the treasures, you get all the uh, all your treasures cards, and then you make it back to your player color, then you win. So that's pretty much the game. I think we're ready to go ahead and talk about what we think. Okay, so now we know how to play. Let's see what we think. First of all, let's go over components. Now, before we say anything else, I just want to say everything comes in a nice tray so everything has its place i like that me too now as far as the actual miniatures nathan what do you think i think they're pretty good yeah i, I would say they're decent they're not amazing but i mean for a kid's game what do you expect but for the, ye the yellow wizard that he's the best yeah yeah he probably is the best and oh and you know and they're good they get the job done and they and they're not they're not bad by any stretch of the imagination so just just don't expect like you know warhammer miniature quality here and i hopefully no one does but they get the job done and they're nice enough and they are of course very distinct colors which is great now as far as the cards you know they're the cards are kind of cheaply made and honestly they're punch out cards they're they're not like loose cards when you get them you actually punch them out from a from a very it's almost i don't know it's just different and they're not excellent quality but they're not horrible and the tiles what do you think? Pretty thick? This, I think it's pretty thick. Yeah, these are pretty thick tiles, and, you know, they get the job done, too, and the artwork's nice on them. So component quality overall, I'd say, is good for, for a kid's game. And, uh, yeah, I, I guess the only other thing I'd say is the board itself, the only thing component quality-wise about the board that I don't just love is the fact that whenever you're playing and you're trying to push the maze tiles through, Sometimes the pieces get stuck and you have to kind of fiddle with it, to, but again, that's just being nitpicky. No big deal. So, as far as the actual game goes, Nathan, did you like it? I liked it a lot. Why did you like it? Because you're trying to find your treasure and you get to move as far as you even want to, unless if there's an area that's blocked off. And I really like how that goes. I mean, that is really fun. Well, that is part of what makes it exciting. I mean, on your turn, you can move as far as you want, any direction you want. So it's all about lining up those maze tiles so that you can maximize each move. And plan the hard part for Nathan is the planning and knowing how to think ahead to figure out where how to get where he's trying to go. Now, do you consider this game too hard? I mean, if, if we didn't help you, Mommy and me, if we didn't help you, would it be too hard for you? I think it would be, because I wouldn't know how to play. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those things that it, it'll it be a good educational game for help for, you know, that spatial awareness and trying to figure out how to maneuver and plan ahead. It's good for that, and I agree with them on the 7. At this point, Nathan can kind of get it, but it's it's pushing the limits for him, but either way, as long as we help him, and because and, we can kind of get an idea of where he's trying to go, even if he doesn't tell us what, uh, what, is, what treasure he's looking for, we can tell what he's trying to do as he's trying to think it out, and we try to help him, you know, the best we can. As far as the rating, though, Nathan, what would you rate this game? I would rate this game, um, I would say it was 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's pretty good. Now, let me just say this. What I like about this game, pro-wise, I like the fact that the maze is always changing, so the game's going to be different every time. The setup's always going to be different, and as you play, it's going to be different. I think that's great. I like the fact that there's basically infinite replay value, essentially, and because you're tr not only is the maze different, but the treasures that you're trying to get are different, so it's always different. 
every time on in every aspect pretty much but the only thing that I don't like about it I, I guess is the fact that in a sense it's maybe too simple I mean you're just moving the maze and then moving towards the treasure you're trying to get that, yeah, that, it is pretty simple. I yeah, gotta say. yeah, it's very, it's yeah, it's just which is a good thing and a bad thing for me. It's good because you know for a family game it's great. I mean, I love it as a family game because mm -hmm. Nathan can get into it and play, and my wife can get into it and play, and it's not too complicated for her, and it just works. So, but then, that, but then whenever it's just too easy, it's not that fun. Yeah, you don't want it to be too simple. So, what makes the game? good enough for me to, because I'm going to go ahead and say that as an adult's game, I would say this is probably maybe 6 out of 10. As a kid's game, I would agree with Nathan, it's an 8 out of 10. Because it does it does help kids think about planning, maneuvering, spatial awareness. But for adults, it is too simple. I mean, I like mazes though, that's the thing. I like mazes, so this is interesting me to me. Yeah, you like doing the maze, you like trying to find out how to get there, and that's a fun aspect. It is, but then it's, it can be too easy, like if you just jump. Well, yeah, I mean, the thing is, the other the other part of the problem is, sometimes some people can get a big advantage, because if the maze starts off to their advantage, they can start moving around and, you know, collecting their treasures quicker than other people just by the luck of the draw, basically. That is another potential issue, but... All that aside, I would still say, you know, for kids, it's a really good game because it, it's educational in its own in its own regard. But also for adults, even though it's not going to be some blockbuster hit, it's still enjoyable if you like mazes. I like mazes, so I, it kind of hits something for me that I like. If you don't like mazes, then more than likely, as an adult, you're not going to care for this game so much. So I think that pretty much sums it up. Um, did you have anything else you wanted to say? Mm, I do. No, nah, I don't think so. Okay. Well, in the meantime, we appreciate you watching the video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down and I'll get to them whenever I can. And um, if you don't mind, we'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe and uh, we hope you watch our next video. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye. Have a good day. Bye.